our decision to get an air source heat pump was based first and foremost on ecological grounds. We wanted to get rid of gas. Uh, we had a vague awareness of how these things worked and what the cost benefits might be. But I think the clincher, to be honest, was with the kids having just left home, uh, we were able to downsize and so we had the cash available. Um, even with a government grant of five grand, it still cost us, I guess, maybe seven or eight um, net. And that's not an insignificant sum of money. But the good news is it works. We've just had our first winter here and we were plenty warm enough uh, throughout in the house and we had ample hot water. So, you know, my advice would be, if you can, go ahead and do this. We looked for installers. Uh, we checked out those that were MCS certified because we knew we'd have to have someone with that uh, qualification, if you call it, if you can call it that, uh, in order to be eligible for the grant. We found a couple. Uh, one of them came round and did a really good job of uh, convincing us that he was totally up to the job. And indeed, he was. Uh, we're very happy with the installation. You know, the net is, I've got no reason to say to anybody, don't do this. Nonetheless, I can talk you through the installation process and then how we're using it. And there were one or two surprises uh, for us um, on that journey. First step for us was to find somewhere where we could put the heat pump itself. Um, here it is, it's 110 centimetres across, uh, 110 centimetres tall, and about 70 centimetres from the front to the wall, and it needs a bit of clearance all the way around it. So uh, you have to have space for these things, and eventually we might put something around it to decorate it, but we've got a corner here where it's not uh, too in the way and not too unsightly. Uh, it needed to be um, in reach of the house and the control centre, if you like, inside, up in the loft. Uh, there are some piping, the flow and return pipes, running up in the trunking outside the house there, a couple of metres up into the eaves of the bungalow, and then there's a nine metre run uh, into, the, into the loft. You can also see the fan isn't working at the moment, uh, so you might wonder about noise when it is working. And so here it is working. You can see the fan going round. Um, you can't see the cold air that's coming out of it, but it really is quite chilly. Uh, and I don't suppose that uh, you can hear it either. It's certainly not very noisy. It's not nuisance noise. Um, yeah, it's audible, but uh, only just. And there are things that people have that make a lot more noise than this. So it's really not a problem for neighbours and not for you inside the house either. If I take the microphone off for a moment and um, hold it there in front probably hear it a bit better now but uh, as I said it's not something which in the wider scheme of things is going to be a problem. Here's where those flow and return pipes get into the loft and they come in round here through a nightmare of plumbing all kinds of valves and uh, and more until they get to the tank and yes this is a pretty big tank it stands about one meter eighty tall just as you need space outside for the heat pump, you're going to need to find space inside for your new hot water tank. You may also have heard of the need to replace some of your pipe work if you've got a heat pump in. And that is true. The reason being that the temperature of the water that comes out of the pump isn't as great as it is from a gas boiler. So to warm a room, you need more surface area in your radiators and you need greater flow of water to them. So your 15 mil pipes probably all have to be upgraded to 22 mil, and you might need an extra radiator. I think in total we had two radiators replaced and one extra one fitted. And I think we still got some 15 mil spurs as well, as long as the main arterial flows, if we put it that way, uh, around the house are 22 mil, that will be absolutely fine. Hand in hand with upgrading the pipework, you also need to check your insulation. Uh, we're lucky to have double glazing and cavity wall insulation. I uh, did need to check out all the, uh, the insulation below floor. I had to put some in and uh, just top up the loft insulation. But really, that's got nothing to do with the heat pump. Really, you should be doing that anyway, whatever your heat source. The three things I ask about green energy solutions are what can I expect from them? How do I monitor what they're doing and how do I control them? With an air source heat pump providing heating for the house, what I expect is steady state heating. Now this is in contrast with the wild fluctuations in heating that we used to get in our old house with the gas boiler and the central heating coming on 
before breakfast and then going off afterwards, coming back on in the evening and then going off for the night. So the temperature in the house would vary wildly during the day. And um, you know that's not necessarily great for the fabric of the building. And it's certainly not great if you want to be in the house all day. Up here in the loft, there are a couple of things that we can use to control the heat in the house. Uh, one is on a panel up behind me, uh, and another is via an app, because this whole thing is connected to the internet via this dongle. Um, full disclosure, it's a bit of a game getting this connected. We had to get a strong Wi-Fi signal up here, I meant installing mesh Wi-Fi and all you know, Ethernet connections and so on, blah, blah, blah. Um, that connects to something which in Mitsubishi's case is called the MelCloud. You download the MelCloud app and uh, register your account and all that kind of stuff. And then you can monitor things and control things from your phone. But in fact, all we use is this little thermostat device that lives in our sitting room. We set the baseline temperature that we want, which as you can see is 17 degrees. Uh, at the moment, just checking, yeah, the room is 22 degrees, very pleasant. So the heat pump isn't on, uh, but if the temperature were to fall, it would come on automatically and sort of preserve that temperature of 17 degrees or above. And that's really all there is to it. We let it get on with its work by itself. Now I've got no comparative data to share with you, the cost benefits of uh, this thing, because our first winter with the air source heat pump was our first winter in the house. So got no idea how much we might have saved there. However, we do know we're onto a good thing because with a heat pump, we're turning one kilowatt of um, electricity into maybe four or five kilowatts of heat. Uh, we're insulated against gas price rises. And um, of course, we've also got solar. So we're, we're very privileged to be in, that, uh, in, be in that position. But on the uh, question of economics, there are some really good videos already available on YouTube. There's a channel run by a so-called Heat Geek, who uh, has a video on the, uh, the real cost, the shocking real cost of heat pumps. And uh, that's well worth looking at if you want to understand the benefits. It's a really well put together piece.